Hello, in this video in my Exploring Rust series, we're going to take a look at building and running programs with Rust's package manager, which is called Cargo. So usually when I come to a new programming language, I sort of think the second step after getting Hello World running is going to be looking at how variables work in the programming language. But the Rust documentation itself covers Cargo next, so I took a look at that and it seems to be really, really good, extremely useful. So if these videos are your main source of information on Rust, I definitely wouldn't skip this one. Let's open up a terminal here in Visual Studio Code. And of course you need to have the Rust binaries in your path at this point. And one thing that's worth quickly mentioning at this point is that you can check if Rust is up to date by running Rust up. So if I run Rust up update, it's going to check if anything needs updating and update it if necessary. Now we've also got this program called Cargo. And apparently what this is, is it's kind of like Maven or Gradle with Java, if you've seen those. It's a tool that can build and run programs like Make or CMake. And it can also automatically download dependencies, which sounds absolutely fantastic. If you're used to using C or C++, you probably had to work with make files at some stage. And to my mind, they are a huge pain in the neck. So I think this cargo thing is a very good idea. I'm gonna start by changing into a directory I made for this tutorial. Let's go into my code directory here and go into 002, building and running programs with cargo. So first we need to create a directory with a program in it. And we can do that with cargo just by typing cargo new and the name of your program. This can't start with a number. I don't think it can contain spaces. I'm just gonna call this hello. So I run that and it creates what it calls a package. So let's take a look at what it's actually done in here. Maybe I can use Explorer in Visual Studio Code. So you can see it's created this cargo.toml file, which is just a really little configuration file, which can list your dependencies if you've got any. I haven't got any here. And it's got a bit of config information up here. It's also created this source folder where we put our source code. And in there there is main.rs, which is just a simple hello world program. So now we have to change into that directory that has just been created. That's called hello. So I'm gonna cd into hello. And then we can do cargo build. It's about as simple as it could be. And that's actually going to create a target subdirectory. And in there, there's a debug subdirectory. There's a bunch of stuff in there that I don't understand. But what we have got is we've got a debug version of our hello program that's been created, which is what you would do by default if you are running C or C++ usually. So we can run that in the normal way. We can write dot slash target debug hello and it runs and says hello world but it's easier and more convenient to run it using cargo run and what's really great about this cargo run command is that it will actually kind of like make detect if you've got any changed files and rebuild your program if necessary so let's change this from hello comma world exclamation mark to hello world triple exclamation mark and then I can run cargo run and you can see it's rebuilt the program and run it again. If we want a release version, we can run cargo build hyphen hyphen release. So now it's created a release version that doesn't have the debug symbols in. So it's going to run particularly fast and efficient, but then we can't debug it. And it's going to put that in a folder called release. So if you know C or C++, this is going to be really familiar to you. And there we've got our release program called hello again. And by default, when you do cargo run, you're going to get the debug version running. If we run cargo run here, it tells you that it's running the debug version. To run the release version, we can do cargo run hyphen hyphen release. And then it runs the release version. So I think this is great. So far, I'm very impressed with Rust. I've started looking at variables and they seem kind of interesting. 
Rust certainly handles things a little bit differently to what I expected, but we're probably going to get onto that in the next video. When I recorded the last video, I wasn't really sure what Rust was at all. I didn't know, for example, if there's some kind of virtual machine that, that Rust programs run on. But apparently, Rust is extremely like C and C++ in that it creates binaries that run directly on your target machine. There's no virtual machine. There's no garbage collector. The binaries are highly optimized so that the speed of Rust programs is said to be similar to C, which is about as fast as it gets without maybe using assembly language. And you can cross compile Rust programs. So you can apparently create a Rust program, for example, for Windows when you're on a Mac. Now, I don't know how difficult that is. A lot of programming languages you can theoretically cross compile, but in practice, it's a huge amount of hassle. And I would think that really, unless you really have to do that, you are better off just developing on your target machine. Except that you can also run Rust programs on mobile devices. And there you might want to cross compile since you presumably can't program Rust on a mobile phone. And again, I have no idea how that is. Maybe we'll look at it later on. There are languages or APIs where in theory you can create mobile programs. In practice, it's a huge amount of hassle. Hardly anyone bothers doing it and maybe you even have to buy some proprietary software. Is Rust like that or is it genuinely easy to create mobile programs using Rust? I don't know yet. We'll find out. I don't even know what chips are common in mobile phones. So far, I'm still excited about Rust. And at this point, I'd like to mention that if you want to watch these videos on Rust without any adverts, absolutely for free. And you also maybe want to see a write-up of these tutorials or explorations, as I like to call them, because I don't know Rust myself yet. Then I've got a new URL for my Substack. The old one still works, but you can now go to blog.caveofprogramming.com. And there you can see my Rust tutorials, including the videos and with a full write-up completely for free. So that's it for this video. And next time I expect we will actually look at variables in Rust. Join me again for that. And until next time, happy coding.